and welcome to Movie Vault 666. My name's Chris. And today I'm going to be looking at Camp Blood. Camp Blood is a low-budget horror film released in 2000 in America. The film was based around a highly original concept for the horror genre, a group of teen stereotypes being chased in some woods by a killer in a cheesy costume. The film was released straight to DVD to such critical acclaim as this. But it wasn't just whiny self-appointed critics on the internet who liked this movie. Look at this quote from The Times. Okay, they didn't review this movie, but they must have used all these words at some point, right? Now, I got this DVD for free, so is it really fair to pummel this DVD for being cheap, given what skinflint I've been? Not really, but tis the season, and it should be a bit of fun, so let's dive right into Camp Blood. Whoa, 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 stop the movie, I want to get off! Once the camera and your head stop spinning, we get introduced to two characters, a sickly yellow-tinged man and an arse, apparently. Oh, and it's attached to a woman. Either way, these two are in the woods chasing the... Ah, the fabled Snuffleupophagus. However, as just shown, the strange-coloured gentleman doesn't seem to be listening. Are you listening, Vic? You're not, are you? Yes, I am. It's just... you're on... Quite distracting. And then of course they start shagging. Or dry humping, I guess, given that their clothes are still on. And of course it's all completely tastefully shot and not at all awkward if you're watching it with anyone else. You just stay here and in a minute I'll be back with the best fucking picture of a asparagus whatchamacallit you've ever seen. Eventually, a stereotypical bird noise causes the man to go off in search of the Snuffleupophagus. However, it turns out not to be Snuffleupophagus at all, but the killer clown, which is in no way lame. We even get this amazing special effect. Although, of course, it probably would be more amazing if I could actually tell where people were supposed to be standing. Eventually, the woman decides to put her kit back on and go search for the sickly-looking man who, for obvious reasons, can't be found. At least not until... This happens! <laughs> Oh no, the clown got gravy all down his shirt right before he killed him. Then the clown appears and begins chase, catching up to the woman after she's fallen over and clearly misses. Okay, now add a crappy font in Vomit Green and that's a wrap! Cut to an outside location and we see a woman jogging, and only Camp Blood can make that look fake. A newspaper then informs her of the disappearance of the woman from the previous scene, which apparently bores Trisha, our main character. But just in case you thought this was going to be boring, the film then ramps up the tension by showing us every step of Trisha making a glass of water, the scene being made unintentionally hilarious by the choice of music. She then runs herself a shower before someone comes out of her airing cupboard or something, judging by the door. And what kind of pointless fake-out will this lead to? Oh my god, it was the boyfriend playing a cliche prank on her. What? And then we cut away, all a little more ashamed than we were before that scene. We now get some boring dialogue between Trisha and Steve, the main purpose of which is to inform the audience that they were planning to go on a trip to Camp Blood, or Camp Blackwood as it's also known. Even though you would have thought the place would have been shut off to the public, what with a world-famous photographer having just gone missing. Instead of any of these issues being raised, there's an awkward pause, then Trisha goes a bit slack-jawed before Steve answers the phone. The call turns out to be from Jay, another character played by Tim Young, who would later go on to be in the classic Asylum Scarecrow series. Anyway, it's established pretty early on that Jay is kind of an arsehole, and so our group of stereotypes begins to assemble, as we already have Normal Girl and Jock, and now Standard Douchebag is off to pick up Slutty Girl. Unfortunately, Nerd couldn't make it, which is odd, so we're down a character at the moment. Beyond introducing Jay as a character, this scene is completely pointless, and it seems to have been jammed completely at random into the movie, because as soon as they stop talking, Steve and Trisha go back to their conversation as if it had never stopped. That's where we're going, isn't it? That's the plan. Do you think that's a good idea? Why, you don't want to go now? Just because the whole place will probably be a scene of an investigation? Trust me, okay? One awkward half kiss, half raspberry thing later, and we cut to some hunters in the woods. Are you ready to bag a few deer? I sure as hell am. 
They don't really seem to serve any purpose that I can fathom, but somebody bothered to write them in, so they're here for the sake of completeness. Meanwhile, Jay goes to pick up his girlfriend and our fourth stereotype, Nicole. I also hope you enjoy watching every second of her putting her bag in the back of the car, because the film decided to keep all of it in. What did I do to deserve this? Oh yeah. Back with Steve and Trisha, and Steve reveals that he's bringing a survival knife to Camp Blood with him. No. Sure, the knife is more scared of you. Trisha then begins to poorly expose it to the audience about how her relationship with Steve has been going through a rough patch recently. Steve then tells us that this is the reason why the trip to Camp Blood is taking place, as it's supposed to help improve the relationship between him and Trisha. Probably in the most affordable manner possible. Also, if they're trying to spend more time as a couple, why even bring other people at all? Fortunately, the exposition dump yeah. comes to a close when Jay and Nicole arrive outside. Maybe they're having a quickie, you know, one for the road. <laughs> Don't give me any ideas. I think it's a little too late for that. Oh, we'll make up for tonight, baby, I promise. Okay. <laughs> Come on! Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe he's not the arsehole stereotype, maybe he's just bipolar. <laughs> Come on! The main characters exchange some tedious dialogue before driving off to Camp Blood. And speaking of Camp Blood, we then cut back to the hunters. I told you, a buddy of mine took out two bucks in this area in one day. Two bucks? I hope you got some change. Oh, oh so they're the comic relief. <laughs> How long until they die? I sure did. Oh, thank God. In fact, the two hunters died. also stumble across the body of the woman from earlier. could have done a thing like that? I don't know, but it looks like she's still alive. Impossible. This is the worst ketchup eating situation I've ever seen. She's still breathing, alright. Sounds like she's trying to see something. Damn it, Timmy had better not have fallen down another well. Anyway, of course it's a trap, and the clown shows up to deliver more fantastic effects like this one, courtesy of Camp Blood. George. So with them out of the way, it's back to our main characters for some more inane dialogue. The Awakening? Was that that movie with, um, Charlton Heston about a mummy? <laughs> You're a fucking retard. It is a vacation. What the fuck are you talking about? What the hell are you doing? Huh? That smell is killing me. So roll down a window. You know I don't like to do that. The window is already obviously open. You know what? It soon becomes apparent that our protagonists are lost, so they try and flag down a strange man by the side of the road. Why don't we ask this guy right here? He looks like a local. Yo, buddy! You fucking deaf or what? Hmm. Well, that went well. However, as they close in on the body... Oh my god! god. <laughs> Thought I was dead, huh? Crazy son of a bitch! Damn kids! Roaring through here in your brand new shiny cars! Polluting the earth with your fast food trash and your loud music! Your digital watches and your leather jackets and your fancy clothes! <laughs> Acting as if you own the goddamn place! Think you can push us locals right off the map, huh? Well... <laughs> You're not gonna get me! Never take me alive! Never! Never! What you all doing here? We're, we're looking for Camp Blackwood. Camp Blackwood? You mean Camp Blood? That's the one. 